Hey guys, what is up? This is Harry and welcome back to another video. So Asdome has sent me another one of their 4K dash cams to review it here on my channel. The M50, which has not one, not two, but three cameras. Yes, this is a three channel dash cam. I had recently uploaded an unboxing and review video of another dash cam sent by Asdome, the M300S dual channel dash cam. If you are looking for a dual channel dash cam instead, then you might want to check out this video. You will be able to find the link to this video on the top right corner of your screen now. In this video, I'll be unboxing this dash cam, showing you guys all of its features, setting it up in my car, the new Kia Sonic, and also sharing some sample live traffic videos so that you can see it in action before making a purchase decision. For your convenience, I have mentioned the purchase link of this dash cam in the description below, clicking on which you'll be getting an exclusive 10% discount on your purchases if you use my coupon code HARRYWT all in uppercase. This 10% discount may or may not change later on in the future. Before we get started, I request you to do 4 simple things for me. First, hit the like button since that helps the YouTube algorithm to get this video out to more people. Second, share this video with someone who's looking for a new dash cam. Third, subscribe to my channel if you haven't subscribed already. And Finally, hit the bell icon to be notified every time as soon as I upload a new video. This simple white and blue box mainly consists of the company branding and model name at the front and rear along with a picture of the dash cam at the front. Let's open up the box now and see what all we get. We get a bunch of stuff in this box. First, we get an attachment that connects to the front dash cam via a magnet with a pre-attached mounting tape that will stick to the front windshield of the car. This attachment has a mini USB port and is also a GPS receiver since this dash cam has an inbuilt GPS. We also get a great quality cigarette lighter power cable to power up the dash cam with an extra USB port at the back. Very useful, good thinking by Asdome. The length of this cable is 3.5 meters, so if you wish to connect it to a USB port located near the rear passenger seats, then there should be no problems in reachability. Then we can see a full HD rotatable cabin camera with a viewing angle of 140 degrees with a black and white gray dual tone color combination. This is mostly made up of good quality plastic and connects to the front dash cam with a type B micro USB port. This attachment is useful in cases where you wish to see what is going on in the car in the duration of your trips. And it has night vision built in which is just fantastic. Now let's take a look at the front 4K dash cam itself which is also made up of good quality plastic. It follows the same color combination as the cabin camera and looks really good. It consists of a 3.19 inch screen, 5 buttons right below it along with a mic and a reset button. On the left, we can see a micro SD card slot along with a type B mini USB slot that connects to the rear camera. As for the other side, we can see a removable cover for the Type-B micro USB slot that connects to the already shown cabin camera along with some ventilation holes. And at the front, we can see a camera with an aperture of f1.8 and a viewing angle of 170 degrees, two speakers and a magnetic connector for the GPS attachment already shown in the video. The build of this dash cam is really superb and I love the design and color combination. It feels really sturdy as well. Apart from that, we get this full HD rear dash cam with a viewing angle of 140 degrees which looks quite big and strong and has a type B mini USB port at the end of a superior quality cable which by the way is 8 meters long and is long enough for most cars. Underneath the rear dash cam, we can see a metallic clamp that can be tightened with the help of screws on either side so that it can be fixed inside or outside the car depending on the requirement. We also get a double sided mounting tape for this rear dash cam if needed. We get a pry tool to hide away the cables in the car along with 5 cable clips for easy cable management. There is also an extra double sided tape for the front dash cam in case we need one later on. We also get a user manual and two electrostatic stickers for the front dash cam in case we mess up the first one. There is no electrostatic sticker required for the rear dash cam. Moving on, we get a 64GB micro SD card which is sufficient enough if not the desired storage capacity. 
Speaking of which, this dash cam supports class 10 or above high speed U3 micro SD cards. And the maximum capacity supported by this dash cam is 128 GB. That was the final item in the box. Let me quickly show you how the setup is going to look like once all of the different items are connected together. This magnet is quite strong and fixes in its place automatically once the front dash cam is close enough. It is a bit of a hassle inserting the memory card but nothing to worry about. As already informed earlier, the cabin camera is rotatable and this is how the front dash cam looks once connected completely. The rear dash cam connects here while the cigarette lighter power cable connects to the GPS attachment like this. Since this dash cam is just for demonstration purpose, I have attached the front dash cam in front of the driver's seat as close to the roof as possible. Installation was quite simple. All I had to do was attach the electrostatic sticker for the front dash cam and then the dash cam using the pre-attached mounting tape. As for the rear dash cam, I have attached it as such in order to get a better view of the road since this is a temporary setup. As soon as I start the car, this is how the dash cam powers up. Looks really good. Okay, now let's take a look at its buttons and features. Starting from the left, if we long press the first button, it will power off the dash cam. If we short press the same button, it will power on the dash cam. If we press the same button just once, it will simply turn off the display while the dash cam still works. If we short press the second button from the left, it turns the microphone on or off. If we short press the OK button at the middle, it will start recording a video if we want and then pressing it again stops it. Apart from that, in photo mode, we can short press this button to take photos. In recording mode, if we short press the second button from the right, we can shift the camera display mode. If we long press the same button, it will enable or disable the Wi-Fi function. Finally, when we long press the first button from the right or the M button, we can shift between recording mode, photo mode and playback mode. Now let's take a look at all of the functions when we press this M button. The first option we get is movie in which we can set the resolution in which we have the option to select between three different video resolutions for the front dash cam while the cabin and rear cameras have only one option of full HD resolution. Front dash cam can record either in 4K resolution, 2K resolution or full HD resolution. Keep in mind, if the cabin camera is connected then the front dash cam will not be able to record in 4K resolution. We can also change the loop recording time where a higher value is preferred. And we can also mirror the rear dash cam output if needed, which means you will be able to see exactly what you see on your rear view mirror. This dash cam also has motion detection function that comes in very handy at times. There is also a time lapse recording option, which is quite interesting. This will reduce the video file size substantially. Good feature to have if you wish to upload long trips online, say a YouTube channel. Quite a unique feature offered by Asdorn. We can even mute the audio if needed. There is an option of WDR which stands for Wide Dynamic Range which is already enabled. This improves the exposure of images by taking the combinations of overexposed and underexposed images into one higher depth image. The G sensor option can be set to high, medium, low or off which is triggered due to physical or gravitational impact force detected by the camera and is quite useful in case of accidents. Interestingly enough, there's also an option to change the exposure of the camera just like in a professional camera. Awesome. The second option we see here is called playback in which we can basically see all of the files captured. The normal video folder consists of the normal recordings that can be overwritten by new videos in case the memory card is full. 
the locked video folder contains those recordings that are captured in the event of an impact and will not be overwritten in case the memory card is full. The picture folder obviously consists of the captured photos. The third option we see is called Park, which is basically for parking surveillance and will only work when connected with the hardware kit. Since we don't have that, we will not be able to enable this function for now. Next option we see is Date Time, wherein we can set the date, time and format. Next is the Wi-Fi option where we can see the SSID and password in order to access the dashcam from our smartphones. Astom has provided an official app for both the platforms Android and iOS in order to connect to the dashcam and access the recordings among other things. In order to install, simply search for the app called Astom in Google Play Store and Apple App Store and install them. Don't forget to allow any permissions that you might see in the app settings in order for it to work smoothly. All of the settings can be accessed from this app as well if needed. Quite a convenient tool if you find the dashcam's display screen to be a bit small or even otherwise. I recently did an in-depth review of this app while reviewing the other Asdome dashcam, the dual channel M300S. You can check out that video if you wish to find out more about this app. You can find the link to that video at the end of this video and in the description as well. The next option allows us to add or remove the watermark from the captured files if needed. In the next option, we can set the storage format warning to be displayed in either 15, 30 or 60 days or even remove the warning altogether. Here we can also format the memory card and also see the remaining free memory. Moving forward, we can select 11 different languages including English. The system option provides us with some common features apart from a very nice feature called fatigue driving reminder wherein the dashcam will remind the driver to take a short break and can be set or removed accordingly. Here we can also set the time zone and reset all the settings to default. And the last option contains the current firmware of the dashcam. This can be updated from Asdome's official site. Alright, now let's take a look at how the recorded files are saved in the memory card. Simply by connecting the micro SD card to the laptop, we get to see three folders. The photo folder obviously consists of the captured photos. EMR stands for emergency and it contains those recordings that are captured in the event of an impact and are locked. Meaning these will not be overwritten by new videos in case the memory card is full. The movie folder consists of the normal recordings and can be overwritten in case the memory card is full. Accessing either the EMR folder or the movie folder we can see groups of three files created at the same time. While the files ending with the letter A are front dashcam video files, the files ending with the letter B are cabin camera video files, and finally, the files ending with the letter C are rear dashcam video files. This setup is quite convenient and easy to understand and manage as well. As promised, here are some of the sample videos recorded on this dashcam in order for you to get a better idea of its recording capabilities.
This completes my review of Asdome's M550 3 channel 4K dash cam. If you enjoyed this video or found the information provided useful, then do give this video a big thumbs up and consider subscribing to the channel to support me. Stay tuned for more such videos. I'll let you enjoy the rest of the video and take your leave now. Until next time, stay safe and take care.